Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this episode of NF Swift Tips, we'll be having a look at one tool called Swift Lint. Uh, basically, that's linter for Xcode. And if you don't know what a linter is, it's basically a tool that will warn you about things like programming errors, bugs, and stylistic errors. The name comes from one old tool in Unix called Lint that it was used to examine C source code back in the day. And when it comes to using linters in your projects, there are a lot of benefits. To name a few of them, uh, it will speed up your code reviews. It can help your developers write code that will look as if it's written by one developer. Also, it will help you uh, by warning you about bugs that are from within the programming language, if you're doing something that will cause them. So the Swift linter was started back in 2015 and by now it's pretty mature. And if you want to know all about it, you should continue watching this video. Okay, so... Alright guys, so here we are on my computer. Uh, that's the Swift Lint uh, GitHub repo. Uh, it's developed by Realm. Uh, you may look at their other work. It's, it's awesome. So, but especially this tool. Uh, let's see how you can get it on your computer in your project. So the first way is to make every developer uh, install Swift Lint via Homebrew using this command. The benefits of this are that it's easier to link your projects like that. It's just a matter of adding a run script build phase in the Xcode project. Uh, but the downside to this is you can only install the latest version of Swift Lint with Brew. You can't, let's say, install uh, the previous version on the version before. You're just installing this you will have only one copy of Swift Lint on your computer and you can use it on all of your projects. So no need for additional um, copies of the same thing. That's cool if you don't have, like if you want to be tight on space, but this tool is really small, so it really doesn't matter. The, the other way to do it is through CocoPods. This is how you install Swiftly with Cocoa Pods. I'll go into detail with all of the possible ways. Uh, Mint, um, I haven't used it before, but basically in order to install Mint, you first have to have Homebrew. So what's the point? You know, it, you can just install it like this. There may be some benefits, but at this point, I really don't know them. I think this tool supports versioning. So if you want a specific version of Swiftlint, you can use Mint to do this. Yeah, some version control things. Yeah, cool. But other than that, it's it's not needed. And the other way, uh, which I like the most, is having the pre-compiled uh, application on your Mac that you have inside your GitHub repo of the current project. And what this helps uh, your team to do is uh, as long as you have the project fetched on your computer, that means it will build nicely. It will, uh, I mean, when it comes to this tool, when it comes to this uh, linter uh, mark, markups, Swift Lint, because you always have the same version of the binary, uh, you won't see any compile errors from it. You don't care about its source code, really. You just want to use it, so you're just a user. And that's cool, because let's say with the other options, let's say with Homebrew, you first have to make sure that your developers are informed about this thing, and they have it installed. And because otherwise they won't be able to build the project straight after checking it out on their computer, which is, you know, it's not cool. If you don't, you have to show them uh, like explicitly how to how to do that. And, you know, 
it, it can get you into trouble and also there is no guarantee that when you install the latest version it will be the one for which you have uh, configured your project so you know it's it's not always the best thing to have the latest uh, version of specific tools without knowing how your code will handle them so keep that in mind with this installation and uh, with SwiftLint there are rules that you can enable and disable and these rules you can get uh, the whole list of, of rules by uh, invoking this command generate docs when you when you invoke it in the terminal in fact let me first install it so that I can show you brew install swiftlint with double L cool so swiftlint is installed and that's the command that I want to show you generate docs so swiftlint it doesn't matter in which directory you are generate docs if you do this it will throw in the standard output a markdown file describing all the rules but in terminal you can't really see it that well so what you can do is you can pipe it to an output let's say the file uh, rules dot md because it's a markdown and then you can see that I have the file here rules md when you open it it looks like that so you have a list of all the rules and for every rule there is an explanation every rule has an identifier and this is what you're using to refer to a specific rule and by default without specifying any uh, custom configuration some rules are disabled and some are enabled and for example this one is disabled now what's cool about these rules and how they are described is that you can see what triggers them and what won't trigger them so you can get an idea uh, whether uh, about the rule whether you like it or you don't whether you want to include it in your project or you want to skip it and so by default these rules are disabled some of them are enabled let's say this one it's enabled uh, and yeah that's the complete list you can have a look at it one one more time so swift lint generate docs generates this uh, markdown file you can have a look at it and decide for yourself uh, which rules you would like to include how you're doing the configuration to your specific project so uh, you can see here that uh, when it comes to configuration it's really simple it's just creating this file where your project is so imagine you have that's the root of your repo and you have only one Xcode project in it and one folder that contains the rest of your project code source files if you make this file in the root directory with content like that I'll show you what what this all means you can this uh, I mean this configuration will be used when SwiftLint is linting all of the files in the current directory where this file is positioned so the root directory or all of its subdirectories if you want to change the parameters of let's say for one specific directory of source files you can have a separate SwiftLint file contained in this subdirectory that you want to alter and that way you know you can have multiple rules for different occasions for different subdirectories uh, in these rules what you can do is you can disable some you can explicitly enable some that are 
by default disabled under this uh, like under this key or I don't know how to call it really under this uh, opt-in rules section you can enable some of them and for example this one is enabled by default if you want to disable it you should put it in this disabled rules uh, directory disabled rules section but if you have let's say uh, this one is disabled by default and if you want to have it you should put it in the opt-in opt rules section these uh, two sections included and excluded are saying which paths which subdirectories SwiftLint should care about and which it shouldn't if you don't do any of these in your configuration, by default it will look in all subdirectories. Uh, that's some like more advanced things. They're still experimental, so I won't cover them uh, now. But here you can see that uh, these are actually identifiers of some of the rules. So first cast should be somewhere here but imagine uh, closure body length for example let's say you can uh, copy this key and put it like in your configuration file and by doing this you can adjust some of its parameters if the rule contains such parameters and supports that kind of configuration for example this one closure body length this one I know supports uh, configuration because you don't really know what uh, too many lines mean when it comes to closure bodies so you have to configure it before you're using it and that's it and you can read more uh, on, on the internet about these for their specific configuration unfortunately this markdown file that gets gets generated does not contain information about that and I found it and I find it a little annoying but you know because if it was here it, you that's basically all you need to know like it's all in one place maybe they'll change it later for now it's like that but it's it's pretty easy it's pretty easy to, to find information about these things so once you know what you're searching for cool so that's uh, custom rules for some kind some specific like, identifiers uh, also you can define your custom rules and there's an example however I haven't done that yet I haven't had the need to uh, really all the rules that I wanted to use in my project are already uh, created by someone so yeah I don't think you'll find yeah, you'll start using SwiftLint without custom rules at first to get used to it and if you're that good and your team is so like strict you may then consider custom rules but yeah for now we won't cover them again so yeah they're saying some things here more but we don't care at this point so how we are doing the integration uh, and oh and also yeah some rules you can uh, temporarily disable and enable like this in your code so you have a file with code in it and you want to disable the colon uh, rule that's the identifier of of the rule this is how you're enabling, that's how you're disabling rules. You can disable or enable all of the rules like that. But I think, uh, in, in my opinion, it's not good practi practice to use these because it makes your code a little unreadable and it's that's the first thing. And the second thing is that you're not conforming to the styles. So, you know, think twice before doing things like that you may have a better solution to you may have a better way to handle the problem cool so how we are adding it to our project 
this is what you have to add as a build phase a run script build phase in your target if you want to use it with uh, homebrew so I have it installed with homebrew I'll go in Xcode I'll create a new project single view application Swift lint testing I'll name it like that and so I'm going to my target going to build phases click on the plus button new run script phase rename it like that swift lint and just put your code here you can format it to be a little more readable and now when you go to source code the default configuration is loaded we don't have added the special file this uh, UML file with the configuration for the specific directory so it's basically uh, yeah what I was setting you it's swiftlint.uml that's the important file and one, when you don't have it the default configuration is loaded so if I build now you will see there's two possibilities now if you're running this on a computer that doesn't have Swi the swiftlint tools installed you will see there is uh, a, a message will be thrown that you don't have the tool installed but if you if you have it installed you will see errors like this or warnings because even the default template to Xcode does not conform to the rules that's how strict you can get so some of them every rule can have different severities and they can, can all be set for example this rule line length is treated as error so line should be 120 characters or less currently is way more it's a com it's a long command and that's why it's complaining uh, there is a second issue like that and all of these are issues that are like just styling to your code and that's cool because let's say when you're doing code reviews in your team one can test whether it conforms to the coding style before taking their colleagues time first you know you can check on yourself whether you're at least conforming to the coding standards first and then you can pass on your uh, review you can give your code to to be reviewed to someone and then he will just look at a well formatted code like not it it will really look as if it's just one person that is writing this project and that's the cool part about swiftlint uh, right so some of the rules swiftlint can fix on its own if you invoke swiftlint auto correct in the directory of your project where you have the .uml file swiftlint will uh, autocorrect some of the rules that are autocorrectable you can see whether a rule supports autocorrection in this uh, column here in the markdown file but for example this one does not support some of them are trivial let's say closing brace uh, should not have any white space in the middle so they shouldn't be like that there should be like one just you know it's there should shouldn't be a white space and this is pretty easy to be uh, fixed so auto correction works there however be careful with these things and always do it when your source control is in clean state so that you can review all the changes but don't trust it a lot like you should not trust this autocorrect 
a lot. It may work like perfectly. I haven't had issues with it. However, keep that in mind because sometimes it may jiggle your things. Uh, cool. Uh, those are all the violations that are currently presented. So what will happen uh, if I add these configuration files? There is one issue here that I had a solution for. I have a special, like a specific way of doing it. And I'll share it with you guys. It may be helpful for you too. So with these configuration files, you really uh, don't know which rules are currently running. What I mean by that. If you have one version of SwiftLint, by default, it could have enabled some of the identifiers and later in a later version of the tool some of the rules may have been disabled or some new may have been added by default which you don't like in your project and so if you're using brew with these uh, with configuration written like that what this means is that for the same configuration two developers on two different computers with two different versions of SwiftLint may have different kind of errors, which is not cool. Because let's say the first developer can see that he is violating uh, code style because he just doesn't have this rule in his SwiftLint uh, binary. And the second can see it and will reject, let's say, the uh, review re request by the first developer. So that's not cool. And I think there should be uh, like a specific way in which you can enable just a given list of parameters that you can guarantee that it will be only them that are running on your project. And by doing this, all developers will see the same set of warnings and errors. You can do this with this section whitelist rules. Once you're adding it to your configuration file, it will run only the rules under this section. So no disabled rules, no opt-in, like you, you should skip all of that. You really don't need it. Uh, well, you can add included and excluded paths. Yeah, uh, but these opt-in rules and disabled rules, you have to uh, get rid of them if you're using the whitelist rules and I think that's the, be the best way because as I said you can guarantee that all developers will see the same thing not different sets of warnings and I have come up with these uh, whitelist attributes and I've made this uh, swiftlint yml file that's the configuration file that I'll be using now to show you guys how you can, you know, add it to your project. So that's our newly created project. I'll go to its directory. So we'll just gonna switch directory to there. Cool. So here it is. I'm in the root of this project. If I make swiftlint.yml file and I copy the content of this one and I paste it here. Now when I when I build the project again, this target that have the build phase added. SwiftLint will use my configuration file and it will say that yeah there are some rules and this line land violation I think it's enabled. Uh, let's let's open it here. I'll I'll open it again in nano because it's easier for me to look at. Oh, and one other thing, guys. Uh, so, 
as you can see because it starts with a dot the file is hidden you can enable or disable this by pressing command button shift and the dot this hides or shows the the file so once again command shift and dot see that's the the shortcut like that it's showing it as uh, the arrow because I'm pressing the shift button but this is what it what it does it cool so let's open it here and now if I if I were to delete all the rules and save it if I go to Xcode and build it now I shouldn't have any errors right so vertical white space violation is this file there uh, swiftlint testing yeah it has to be that let's let's look at it from here yeah it's empty strange hmm maybe I got the name wrong Maybe I got the name wrong. Uh, I'll get it from from here. Hmm, I don't think it's that swiftly. Yeah, let's see once again. I have clean build the project. Yeah, as you can see now, there are no issues. So because just there is not not a single rule is is working. Uh, let me open this file again. So I'll drag it here and now I'll get uh, let's say I'm just gonna get this this row just to test it out you know to see how, how it is what you can do with it cool so let's let's build it now and let's read what this what this uh, row is about so attributes should be on their own lines in function and types but on the same line as variable and imports so this is what will trigger this row to be shown let's have a property like that here without the arrow without the arrow if I build it now, we should see the row triggering. Yeah, here it is. Attributes violation should be on their own line in function types, but on the same line as variable. Let's check now the autocorrect feature to see what will happen. Swift lint autocorrect. Correcting app delegate view controller. What about correcting view controller? Done correction to files. Mm, yeah, but I'm not seeing that changing. Maybe. Yeah, this doesn't support out correction. That's why. Well, some of them support, but some of them don't. So you know that's it. But uh, you can even make uh, aggregate target here in Xcode. So if you go here, you can uh, have another target go to cross platform aggregate target you can name it swift lint auto correct like that and so in this target in the build phase you can go get a new run script swift lint auto correct pretty much 
copy this this bit and put it and the only difference is that here you pass an argument so auto correct and when you go here and select this target now it will do the auto correction for you when you build the target that's one way in which you can let's say before uh, pushing to your branch and preparing for a merge request you can go and just like run this target to be sure that at least the things that are autocorrectable uh, will be fixed by the tool on their own so that you can deal with only the issues and warnings that uh, they that can't be autocorrected on their own like they're not trivial cool so that's the first way of doing it of integrating swift lint in your project i'll copy all these rules that i have uh, checked for myself maybe i'll add them later in uh, in my github account in the gist let's say in github so that I'll use them in all of my projects but basically the best practice here I think is if you're a small team of developers the best thing to do is to schedule a meeting where you get your coding styles sorted out so that everyone that will write code in this project agrees on these uh, coding conventions because otherwise it may look like some of the developers are, are trying to force their style onto the newcomers and sometimes that does not turn out really great for the new devs they feel not that good about that so try to like be as open as you can because this everyone has its unique style of writing and everyone should be happy with your with the coding standards in your project and Another good thing to do also is to try and integrate this newly developed coding style in all of your work, so throughout all of your project. That's way uh, when you have to move a developer from one team working on one project to the next team working on another project, if, they, if the coding styles are matching, this new developer will have an easier time getting his head around and understanding the new environment and the new product so that's also a good thing to do and as the tool develops as swiftlint develops you can have um, regular meetings let's say annual meetings for discussing these rules maybe the new ones that came out or you want to introduce a custom rule or something you know it's cool but in the beginning usually that's that's a way to start discuss it get uh, like a list with rules that you like and start conforming to them the other way to do that thing was with, with the project that you're inheriting from some other developers and they didn't use swiftlint there is try to enable rules that you find uh, important at first let's say uh, like rules uh, in stages at first you start with just two or three rules then when you don't have warnings in your project about them add more rules make it stricter and stricter and stricter and that way you won't be like uh, all of a sudden filled with warnings that you have to fix they will come in stages and it will be easier for you to work on your project and not just uh, like trying to deal with all these styling issues that the client will not really understand why you're doing it and why you're spending your time on this instead of developing features not all clients are like that but trust me some of them would like you to build everything as fast as possible not like and when you're not delivering 
for them it's like oh this guy is doing nothing so yeah keep that in mind uh, and yeah these are the rules but if you're starting a new project this shouldn't be a problem even if there's so much cool so that's the first way of integrating swiftlint let's now see the second way of doing it with CocoaPods so I'll go and create a new project again I will call it Swift Lint Testing uh, Cocoa Pots like that. And by the way, that's their recommended way of doing it. So when you see the install guide, where it is, yeah, here using CocoaPods, simply add the following line to your pod file. This will download the uh, binaries. I don't think you have the source code here, or maybe you will, but you don't need it really, or I'm not sure about that. But uh, that's the recommended way to install it, because you have control of the versions. With the pods, you can say, I want that version of SwiftLint, and it will always download this one because now doing this will be identical as doing that only the latest ones and on some computer the latest one from one year ago it's not the same as the latest one from yesterday so it's different cool so I have a new project created let's open this let's close this one the old one and I'll get this directory loaded here in my terminal. Get out of the project file. And here I'm here I'm at. I'm here. So to start with Coco Pots, you first have to call pot in it, as you may know by now. If you don't have Coco Pots installed in your computer, I think it was sudo gem. Uh, install CocoaPods yeah it fr comes from Ruby not from Homebrew I think I'm not sure about that but it's easy you, you can find information about that and once you have issued this command you will see that you now have a pod file so you can go inside this pod file and uh, if you put this line here in your target like that and save the file now if we invoke both install it will download all of our dependencies and it will generate a project workspace for us to which we had to use from now on so I'm closing this thing this project and we'll open the workspace I don't need this directory so opening the workspace and now there's this new uh, project added from CocoPod Now we can still use we can still use the two the SwiftLint version that we have with Brew from our computer. Uh, but this doesn't make sense because we have just downloaded it with CocoaPods. So this is how you you can use the CocoaPods version. So that's an environment variable that CocoaPods add to your Xcode configuration workspace. And so by doing this, you are invoking the tool from the pods directory. It's there, it's compiled, and it will do the same thing. So if I go here, again, a brand new single view application, if I run it, you'll see a lot of errors. If everything was go, uh, went well. Um, but uh, as we are uh, waiting, I will install uh, 
uninstall swift lint yeah just to as a proof to you guys that it's, it's not used anymore so it's not on my machine anymore and the one from uh, from the pots file is loaded and so if I now go and grab this uh, UML file again swiftlint testing it was here if I open this in finder that's the UML file that I want if I go in our new project and put the Helm file here, the configuration file now it will load exactly the same as it was with Homebrew because it's the same tool so the configuration is loaded and what more you can do is you can even drag it and drop it here let's say make a folder group yeah group uh, saying linting rules or configuration or something like this and put your config file in there and now even from Xcode you can edit and decide which rules you want enabled and which you want disabled so that's really cool let's say if I now get rid of all of these and save it if I build the project again all of this should go away swiftly oh you know why maybe it's moved the directory uh, let's see where this file is positioned oh it's it's in the root directory cool uh, yeah well that's strange uh, if we if we move it to this directory where the code is should should be different but yeah I mean it's a small thing it's a small issue you'll get the configuration right as long as you you understand what these rules are all about and how you can write it it really doesn't matter if it's not showing up now cool and now I'll show you the last way which I think is uh, maybe the most convenient for me to use this tool just commit the binary of the tool in your uh, git repository and that way you have the tool on all the computers of all developers you have the same version and what's even better is it will run like anytime something major has to happen with mac os so that this tool is no longer compatible but you know if you if you really uh, want a specific set of rules that are currently existing you won't feel the need in my opinion to update that frequently this tool so you can just have it there and you know it will work just nicely and why i don't like you can do the same thing with coco pots too that's true uh, you can do the same thing with versioning however if your project is set up in a way that you're not using the dependency manager CocoaPods but let's say you're using Cartage or you're linking uh, bind, uh, like you're linking frameworks directly on your own or fetching them with git sub modules you know there's so many ways there's no need to add a second dependency manager to your project let's say CocoaPods in this case only for this specific uh, SwiftLint tool you may be better off by just committing the binary and use it because you won't need the code to SwiftLint in most cases if you want to contribute to the tool yeah it's it's you can absolutely do it these guys are open to forks and so it's every, everything is well described it's really cool yeah it's an open community you can add you can invent new rules 
it's cool but if you don't want to do all of that you're just fine with having just the binary and now I'll show you how to do exactly this so let's make uh, one more new project again again single view application I'll name it swift lint uh, testing bin just for binary like that cool so let's let's make a folder I'll name name it tools for example put it in the road and now if I go here into releases this is their latest release 0.31 at the time I can just go down to where the downloads are that's the release notes you know these are the new things the fixes and stuff cool and I can get a portable version of SwiftLint which will just give me the executable file the Mac O executable compiled executable that I can run uh, from the build phase this thing here it's a package which will install SwiftLint on my computer in a way similar to Brio these things are for some linkings I'm not exactly sure what you should do with that and maybe it's something for developments and this is where the source code is so it's the same files for all the other releases so 0 0.30 0, uh, 0.29 they all have the same files I'll get the latest one now so portable SwiftLint is what I want because I just want to have the two uh, so I'll open the downloads folder now really quickly downloads maybe I'll go from here so portable SwiftLint as you have Maybe seen, yeah, I have already downloaded it today when I was trying out earlier. So I can just get these two, or I can, I could even, you know, do something a bit different. Uh, I can, uh, let's go back to downloads. I'm just gonna grab that folder. And we'll try to put it here. Let's see if it's gonna work or no. Yeah, I think it's working. I don't like the name. I'll just gonna rename it really quickly to Swift Lint, like that. And so that now I have the license of the file. I have the binary, the executable that I'll be using in my build phase. I will also make the uh, .uml file. Let's open this directory in Finder like this. And where are the other windows? So let's get this one. No, it's not that. I have a lot of things opened. SwiftLint testing binary. Yeah. So I'm just gonna copy this here and now I can add it to my SwiftLint Tools folder. I want I don't want to copy it. I just want it to be referenced so so that it stays in the root of my repository and it acts as a global setting to the repository. But I have it under this category here, under SwiftLint. So everything stays nice and compact. Cool. So now I can go to my build phases. And remember, I, I currently don't have it installed on my computer. I have removed it from Homebrew. I haven't integrated it with CocoaPods here. I'm just going to use this binary. Here's how. So new run script. I'll rename it again. Because that way you know better and you're just doing 
this drag and drop and see where the root of the project file is uh, this dot here represents the folder in which your project file is so the current directory of this shell will be where the project file is so I know that my tool is under the folder tool swiftlint and I want to execute it from there so now if I build my project I should see warnings popping up from swiftlint by doing this just checking out the project here they are yeah the same things again so by doing this every time every developer who checks this out on a new computer will have it and it will run nicely uh, as long as there are no other issues not related to swiftlint and with the other options you have to first either install install it with homebrew or install it with CocoaPods you may have to add CocoaPods even to your project so that's another dependency manager which I really uh, and that's a situation that I really am trying to avoid in especially with big projects because having dependency managers multiple of them in my opinion is not that great you should try to stick to just one let's say pick cartridge pick cocoa pots or something else but stay with this dependency manager don't uh, don't add a second one or even a third one for just for some specific things because then your code can get a little a little messy and the linking will be harder you know you have a lot of issues try to keep it simple you can achieve the same uh, same uh, linkings and reach the same dependencies with just one dependency manager you don't need multiple of them cool and another benefit of this is that now you can guarantee that all developers have the same version of the tool it's exactly exactly the same so it's not possible that one developer will see one set of warnings and the other will see another set of them they will all have the same output they will all have the same warning so when you're about to uh, re request a merge review from someone code review from someone I, I mean then you could be sure that when he checks out your work he will not gonna see another warnings that you haven't saw just because your version of the tool is older than his and especially if you have the whitelist option instead of the other disabled rules enabled rules like opt-in things if you if you disable these like and use whitelists only then even the configuration of the tool will be the same for everyone in my opinion that's the best way to use it thanks for the watching guys I hope this tool will help you keep your team's coding standards high and it will also act as a helpful guide to the newcomers in your dev team. If you want to know more about SwiftLint, you should check out this lecture that I'll put a link to in the description below. And it's from Realms Academy, the creators of this tool, so they know all about it. Have a nice day everyone. Bye bye.